Hey guys, Dixie's here, just making this video um, for the well, Vitashrin. I'm not too sure if you guys know how to pronounce it. He's <laughs> trying to let me know sometime. Uh, Vitashrin. Vitashran. I'm not sure. There's just going to be a complete guide for it, so showing you guys where all the mini boss locations, among other things, are. Um, so if you're ever curious to kind of get an idea of what's fully out here and what you can fully do, um, this is going to be the guide for you. Um, and the gear I'm just currently running, I just got five piece Aurora with five piece Mother Sorrow, one piece of Lombris. But I just noticed my Lombris is the wrong piece, and this is on PTS, of course. Um, so, just gonna quickly, you know, pick up a good heavy helmet. That's a shoulder piece. I know what I'm doing, I swear. <laughs> Alright, just to offset the, give us a little more health. Um,. So when you're doing it as a stamina magicka or like stamina or magicka DPS, typically as you, that's what you'll most likely bring in here. There's two different orders you want to do it. So if you are mag, you want to do green, blue, then red. And if you're stamina, you want to do blue, red, and then green. That'll give you your best benefits for the stats that you'll want to get the boons for. In the Spirit Slayer run, I just recently posted a couple of. Um, that will show you how to get the Stamina Boon here, as well as the Health Boon. And in here, I'm going to be showing you guys how to um, get the Mag Boon. We'll do another little quick little run just to show you guys the Stam portion as well. But that's just kind of a, give you a quick idea of what to be expecting during this. Um, each arena that you do, the other ones become harder. So there's definitely a lot of personal preference in this. And you know what? I'm on normal. That's fine. Like, I was just going to be showing you a normal little clear through it just to give you guys a quick guide. Um, nothing should be too much more different than veteran. I mean, granted I haven't done normal, but we'll find out. You should be able to still get all the boons and everything. <clears throat> and kill that little Spriggan dude that was right here so that way you can do more damage to this guy. Actually, you couldn't hurt him beforehand. But that's fine. So we're just going to just gonna take him out real quick. And then we're going to get to the first boss. The first boss is, is not too bad. And of course there's two different ways. And I'll show you the mechanical way of handling the fight. As well as just your normal way of going about it. Um, so start the fight. You just kill these three little Spriggan attendants here. And they will continue to spawn throughout the fight. Uh, the big thing about them is they will essentially spawn on the edges of the map. And when they do... Um, occasionally they'll, they'll just keep hitting at you during that time and they will try to tether to you and when they do it's going to try to steal the boon that you have um, the boon essentially is that blessing of the grove that you can see in the bottom right um, essentially the main thing is is if you let them take it yeah like this little tether right here this is what I'm talking about you just need to bash them to stop them if you don't get the bash off your screen will turn a blue color so I'm actually going to take a moment so that way we can make sure we get that visual if possible. As the fight on normal is not going to last nearly as long. Um, let's see here. Come on. Oh, did that one? <laughs> I actually pushed it without trying. Oops. Um, let's see here. So the damage isn't too intensive on normal, of course. And you can always get the imperfect versions of the arena weapons this way. Um, the big thing to kind of like bear in mind is the fact that <clears throat> is for the like tether. Like, that's kind of like the biggest portion of this. You can kind of ignore the Spriggans and just keep part like DPSing the boss. You can know which one you need to actively hit as they have this gold aura underneath them. Okay, so now I'm getting tethered again and I'm going to let it go through. So I'm going to let him take it. This is He's stealing the blessing and you'll get this screen animation here. Um, once you get to this point, you'll notice that if I try hitting him, he doesn't, he doesn't take any damage anymore, even though he's the correct one. And the reason for that is we got to kill these guys. So we got to kill one of them. You don't have to kill all of them, just one of them. And you get that aura back to you, and then you can hurt the bosses again. Um, essentially, that's just like the only real mechanic about this boss. Of course, they don't hit too hard. Like, you have one of each type of lurcher, but they aren't too bad. Um... And we will come back here for the next run, but that is where the secret boss is, is that way. And we pass the stamina boon. We'll come back for that when we give the next little playthrough example. So we have our grappling hook after you defeat that boss. 
I'm just going to want to grapple over here. You don't have to kill this stuff. If you kill their gatekeeper at the end, you're good. Um, just know, for example, in the blue arena, certain fights will... Like, the final boss has more added, like, fights to it if you don't kill a certain enemy, which I'll explain when we get there. But for now, we just gotta kill this little gatekeeper, and as you'll notice, the other enemies just kind of despawn after that. So there's that little salamander over there. Yeah, it just dematerialized just from that. So now we have a grappling phase, which you want to jump to here. I'm going to let myself fall down. You can continue grappling as fast as you want. But, yeah, you just want to kind of bounce between these. And there's a little platform to land on. And then come over here. And then once we're here, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of walk around them. You can just kind of aim over here. There's going to be a grapple up here. And once again, you just kind of hop on over and you can just quickly grapple like I'm doing. You don't have to. There's a pad, so if you don't, don't stress it. And just once you get used to it, you can kind of do that. Alright, so then we have our little gatekeeper buddy here. He's just another one we just want to kill quickly, and he's our primary target. So. Oop, okay, now we get to go to the final boss of green. He, I'm not sure if they're going to have all of his mechanics on here, but I'm still going to detail it like if it was all the veteran mechanics. So when you get up here, it's going to immediately start the fight now. It used to not, but now it does. Um, the key things to know is that there is a interrupt mechanic as well as a pad mechanic. So he's going to jump from you, and you want to get over there quickly with him. He only does it a couple of times, and then he'll stop. Uh, main reason we want to just kind of keep up with him is it. He does a very high damage AoE, and we can't hit him back most of the time unless you're using, like, Snipe on Stamina. But you'll spawn these little shade dudes when he does change color. And if you're ever curious about what color he is, you can look at him right now, and you'll see that he is a blue hue, and we can't hurt him anymore. Like, he's not taking any more damage. So from that point, we're just going to grapple over to a red pad, and that he'll chase us there. So once he chases you here, he's going to just continue chasing you the rest of the fight. He won't run from you, um, and the key thing is, is we're just going to keep DPSing him, and now around the 50% mark, roughly around here, it's hard to say, I haven't gotten the exact percentage on that, but what he'll do is these guys will start doing their little prey thing. Whichever one you interrupt, it'll free the space across from it. I usually advise at least getting two of them, one blue, one red, and then from there, you can kind of just go diagonally to the one you want. And he'll, he'll of course jump after you, so just make sure you're ahead of him. But the reason why we do two of them is they light those two pads on fire, and we still have two we need to do the color mechanic. Um, but the big thing we have a nice benefit of is the fact that we can get a little extra time to DPS him. Um, if you end up as a stamina here, you can do the side boss, which will make it so that way you can get a little bit an easier time like uh, handling these guys. But if you're doing this as mag with the advised route I gave, you're not going to have much, a little too much to worry about. And one thing that's really nice about this arena is if you don't want to loot these chests, like if you just want to kind of go ahead or if you accidentally forgot about them, you can go ahead and just go through the portal. And if you look here, they actually put them outside now. So they're just here. I think they go away if you complete the final boss before looting them, but essentially you can leave them there and pick them, well, pick them up as you exit the arena instead of in the middle of the arena. So now we're going to go to the blue door, which is the wounding. And it's kind of similar. We got our main primary objective, which you can kill these things as we go. Like, please encourage you taking this at your own pace. It's not, unless you're going for Spirit Slayer, it's not necessarily a time constraint, so don't stress that too much. Um, but our main goal is to get this Warden down. They're the main target. And it's always good to have at least one AoE skill. So like one AoE spamble, I should say. Um, if you don't, that's fine. But once he, they die, they skip. And we're going to wrap around. Because we did the green first and we have the grapple hook, we're able to come over to this little hidden grappling post over here. And with this hidden grappling post, this is where we can get our Magicka boon. So it's the es essence of mysticism. And it's a really nice one because, as you'll see, it adds a lot of mag. Like, a lot. Because we're currently sitting at 40.5k on our front bar, and we're going to use that as our measurement since it's our highest set. Yeah, so it's just more of the scrappling. 
Um, you can kind of just shoot for that one over there and let it fall. Like it won't kill you if you do that. They they fix that. It used to kill you pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, once you just land, you just want to can't go to the next, and then you just go to that last post. And from here, you'll have your or your uh, essence of mysticism. And then we'll have like fragments of mysticism kind of spread throughout. And as you'll see, we have 47k mag on our front bar now, just from having that one portion. And now that we've done it, we have fragments that are throughout the map. And each fragment will in further increase it by about 1k. Of course, with our stat multipliers, that's going to be a little bit more than that. But it is going to keep increasing. So that's why we could do it this way, because if you do blue then green... You can't come back to get that mysticism buff for your mag tune. So it's always a great boon to have. And you can easily get Spirit Slayer with doing the boons. And if you can do it with extra stats, why not? Um, I mean, the only things you'll want to do is, which I actually need to do right here, is kind of take a look around. Because they're going to spawn. Some of them will spawn on this edge over here. And if I'm not mistaken, I've seen one by that tree too, right there. Um, so what we'll do is kind of just peek around as we maneuver here and I keep looking around so it doesn't look like there is one that's okay oh there's one by the warden over here though so we'll go pick up that one yeah so you can go and kill the warden beforehand before you're picking it up at least if I'm mis like not mistaken, that is correct. But we'll go ahead and do that and see what happens. Because I'm pretty sure as long as you don't kill the final boss, you're good to come back and gather these. Yep. So we picked that up. 48.9k. Which is good beefy stats now. So this boss is a great boss. Um, he's kind of interesting. He's a little simple, which is nice. But what you want to do when you first start this boss on... Well, yeah, when you start fighting him, either on normal or vet. So you want to get him to about 40%. And from there, you just want to go back to focusing this flesh, dude. Um, the big thing about him is that we want to kind of chunk him down. And, and of course, get an interrupt. He'll do this slam-like mechanic, which is fantastic. as you par partially need it for one of the achievements. But the other thing that's nice about it is occasionally the boss will put up this dome here, exactly as you see here. And with that, what we're going to be able to do is, you can't hurt him, but if you get him get smashed, that's where he'll start being hurt again. And so from here, since we just want to execute them both at the same time, so he's teleporting away, so keep an eye on where he goes, and just finish him off. If you can kill them both relatively quickly they won't do their enrage to where you have to do more damage and when we're running through here you're going to have a timer this wounding portal which you'll see in the bottom right corner a little purple aura similar to what you see on the screen here and we just need to activate one every 20 seconds which you have plenty of time to do as most of these you can just kind of sprint towards like even without grabbing this one I can make it to the end but if you're wanting to kill everything you go and pick that one up and our main goal is just to get to the end here and pull the chain, which you can do even when you're in combat, so don't fear if you get like interrupted, it's fine. It's also very nice on that part to make it a little more user friendly there. Um, the big thing is, is always kind of keep peeking around, because there sometimes is a mysticism fragment there. Um, but one thing we do want to do, because to make the final, this final boss easier... So we want to kill this eyeball. These eyeballs will come into the boss fight if you don't take them out here. It's not too bad if you don't. As you'll, have you probably saw my Spirit Slayer on, I didn't take them out. But it helps to do so as it does make it a little easier. And then you can just walk around this little gate, dude. You don't have to bother with him. He despawns once we complete the portal. So as we're running through here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's another eyeball there. And because we have 10 seconds left, I'm actually going to try doing some damage to him before picking that one up. Because I have 5 seconds left on my timer. And so we killed it, and that's what happens when you're too slow. <laughs> it sends you back to the wounding portal, so you start it up again. But the thing is, is the progress you make in the wounding portal, it stays. So as you see, the eyeball is dead. So 
Whatever you kill in here, when you do get sent back, it doesn't like reset it. So you're gonna be good there. Yeah, then we can just kind of keep running. You can pick that up if you need it, and then just pull the chain. Done. And now we're going to go to the first secret boss that I can show you guys. Um, I'll show you guys the green one when we go back through there. As he's kind of obnoxious. Oh wow, look at that. Two mysticism orb fragments right here. That's great. Oh, there's another one up there. I gotta keep that in mind. Um, so the big thing is though, we're gonna go get this side boss first. So let's go ahead and pop up here, pick up that fragment. Now we got 51.7k mag. This stuff's crazy. Alright, so then we're gonna grapple. This is how you get to the first secret boss. And the secret bosses primarily, like primarily are there to make the final boss of that arena easier, which helps. Oh, look, there's another fragment up there. That's another thing that always keep in mind is, if you're really going for the boons, if you want the maximum out of the boon, you do want to do the secret bosses for those specific boons. Uh, like we have a eyeball here, so let's go ahead and start DPS and him down. And so we still got 10 seconds, which is fine. It's plenty of time. Uh, we can hit this, come pick up our orb, have 53k mag, and then pull the chain. Let's go. Um, now we're going to get to the first secret boss. The secret boss isn't too bad, though. Um, in all honesty, he's, he's pretty up front. Um, well, kind of. Not really. He's not up front at all. Um, he actually likes to hide. So, if you look to our left and right, we have these prison cells there and there. What he's going to do is, when we start the fight, he's actually going to spawn a mimic. And with that mimic, he's just going to teleport out. If you kill this mimic, it doesn't actually do anything. He just spawns another. But you want to keep your distance from the mimic, at the very least. And then just use the wounding portal to get teleported to the boss. And then from there, he'll pull you in. You just need to break free and walk away. And then just can't keep going at him. He'll occasionally... Actually, I'm going to stop my damage because I want to show you guys the next phase if he does it on normal. So he's going to send me back here in a second, which is good. And then I'll show you guys when you kill this mimic. See, he does an animation where he'll just like slam his staff down, just like that. He spawns another. Well, we can use the portal, so we'll hop in there. And inside the second phase, you'll see he starts spawning these vampiric totems. Just like the ones in the Imperial City, you want to make sure you just kill these totems as quickly as you can as they heal the boss, and that's a big no-no. But outside of that, it's pretty straightforward. Just finish him off. And then once you do, if you look in the bottom right, you'll see this empowered teleportation. And this is going to be a benefit for the final boss. So as you see here, it gives you a buff. The empowered sigil traps a Zivkin soul under the player's influence for a short duration. And we're actually going to try this out because I think I know how we activate this one. So we're going to learn this one together. During the final boss, we're going to have a mechanic with the pads. And we're going to be able to use that. So that's what we're going to have. Um, so we just grapple and drop. Grapple, drop. Just keep... Just keep on going just on the way back that we came from. Um, be careful about the waters. If you miss the grapples, try to take it a little slowly to start with because if you miss the grapple, it will kill you relatively quickly. Even if you got the grapple again, it has a really sensitive uh, kill wall, like a little kill barrier, like death barrier, I mean. But we have another eyeball here, so let's go ahead and take this little eyeball out. And shouldn't be too difficult. Especially because we're on normal. Yeah, so then that's dead. Remember, we had this little eye over here, the last little orb mysticism there. So 54.4k. And we're going to be able to check the achievement progress because I believe that will signify that that's all the ones we could get for here. And then our Markars achievements for Vashanti Hollows. I don't know why I keep saying Vashanti because that's not at all what it is. The Teshron hollows yeah so we got all the mysticism remnants so that means that this is the max that's gonna give us is this 54k which is sweet that's a crazy high amount um, so from there we're just gonna keep going forward 
and we're, this is the final boss for blue. Inside here, you'll notice a little familiar theme if you've ever done VMA. So we have the upstairs portion as well. But to start off the fight, we're just going to kind of go ahead and start attacking him. We're not going to use the portal immediately. Main reason for that is we're going to wait for the watchers to spawn. As I'm going to show you the more mechanics have, like heavy portion of it. You can just straight up parse him and just keep going for it. But you'll see these green beams start forming. And from them, you'll see there's watchers up there. So, oh, I might have missed the sentinel. That's fine. At least I believe that they carry over. I could be wrong. If you know, please let me know in the comments. Stop me from giving misinformation on that. Alright, so now we're going to use the wounding portal. I'm just going to leave my blockade right there for him. And up here, we just have these little watchers. And we have a Zivkin up here now, as I suspected. He's just an ally, kind of. T a slide attacking, it looks like. Um, and I assume we just drop down. Yeah, that's it. But, I'm curious, is our little pal stay up there? No, he doesn't. It's unfortunate. So, he just helps us out with the Watchers, which aren't too big of a deal. Like, you don't normally kill them on that. If you want to, you can kind of just work around them. But, I mean, it is what it is. Could help for the achievement if you're going for that. Alright, and just like that, we finish the wounding. Then, to do the wounding, and we're now able to get the health boon from the red, which is very handy. Literally, not even. <sighs> this is kind of a lazy guy, I don't know, I'll be up front. Um, not gonna edit too much audio here, but definitely wanna make sure you guys are able to see all the content inside the arena. Been running it quite a bit. Now because we did the blue, there's this portal you'll see over here on the far right. And with that portal, that's how we go get the health boon. So because we did it in the order mentioned, we're able to kind of get our two key buffs being health and magicka. And with that, we're just going to have a jolly old time with sustain and survivability. Helps out a lot. But as we get a wounding portal, apparently it spawns our little friend too. <laughs> I don't know why he's here with us, but he's here. He's part of the crew now. And if you jump at the right pace, you can actually mitigate the lava damage. Like, it, it takes a bit of timing, but there you go. See, there's a few of these jumps. Not all of them, especially not at the end there. But you can definitely get a right pattern to where you don't take damage, which is kind of funny. And you just pick up this orb of Essence of Fortitude. My apologies, I keep calling it an orb. And from there, now we have 22k health instead of 16k. And there's going to be Essence again, which is really nice. Um, well, the uh, Fragments. Not Essence Fragments? Not sure how it Oh no, it's a, uh, it'll be Fortitude Remnants, that's what it's called. That's right. Keep calling them Fragments, because that's all I think about. No, they are. There's sometimes one over here on the right, well left, as well as over there, but I don't see one. Oh, there's one right here, though. So I'll be able to pick up this one. Ooh, and the lava hurts, so be careful with that. Try to use a shield or, you know, a speed boost like I have equipped, but didn't use. Otherwise, you might die. Or even just jumping like I advise. You know, I could have to take my own advice. Alright, so did you kill the little warden dude? Yeah, there's another one that'll occasionally spawn here, so just pick that up. Um, you can always kind of peek around the arena before it starts. This is the next boss. Uh, so we got one all the way over there, so that's good. But, for this boss, not too difficult. Key thing is, is just kind of keeping focus on the boss, in my opinion. You'll occasionally put some off focus on the little ads that spawn, but it's nothing too much to stress about. Yeah, so we have a portal spawning ads there, and there will be occasionally be a. There he is, this Iron Natro. And when the boss teleports away, which hopefully I didn't kill that too early, 
as this little throw rock synergy will go away. Alright, so she teleported over here. If you throw the rock there, it plugs the geyser and stuns her. It's pretty much the only main mechanic outside of those like flame walls you guys just saw. Uh, so just kind of keep DPS in her. And if these guys get a little obnoxious, they don't have a lot of health, so I usually just throw AoEs at them and then just kind of go back to focusing the boss. Yep, and just like that, the Magma Queen will be done. She's not too different on Veteran either, honestly. So from there, you just heavy attack those orbs. Those little orbs, if you don't heavy attack them, then they go away. It's, a, it's sad. But one thing I will show you guys real quick, just to demonstrate it, is if you come over here, occasionally there will be another one over here, just like right where I'm at right now. But the big thing is, if you are, you know what, I'm going to try it. That way I can show you two things. If you're too far away when you heavy attack it, you don't get the benefit. See, it's gone. I don't have it anymore. Sad day. Um, but don't stress too much. Let's see if I can get the right pattern. Takes a moment. <laughs> There we go, that's that's relatively close. So you just jump and spam a heal. You can make it through without, as I'm starting to say, is like don't stress too much. You're, you're still gonna be fine. No look, we got another fragment right behind that little furnace. Just sweet. So we'll go snag that. Get even more health. There's one sometimes occasionally on that bar right here, so can't keep your eye out. And for this secret boss, it turns these like protection like mechanics into a offensive mechanic, which is pretty sweet. I'm happy about it. And try to ignore that bone glass dude. He's like you don't have to kill him. He's just a major pain in the rear. So don't focus on it. Just kinda take out these little mage dudes. That'll be all you need to do. Just because they clear up this pad and they're less of a nuisance. So, then just heavy attack this. And then there's sometimes an orb right here. And there's bound to be one. There's two different spawns here. So, there's one that can spawn here. There's another that can spawn right here. But neither of them are there. That's fine. Um, then we'll heavy attack the orb again. They do respawn, so don't worry. We do have a way to get back, and in the worst case scenario, we got jumping. <laughs> um, we don't want to take this one quite yet. What we're going to do actually instead is we're just going to go to the wounding portal. And once again, you have to complete these to be able to do the blue ones. Like You have to do blue to be able to do these mini bosses and get the health boon. So just keep that in mind. So if you don't do blue first, you can't quite get your... Oh, and once you finish, come back for the orb now. So just heavy attack, boop. And then we can run over and just get right on over to the side boss here. Well, the other secret boss. This one isn't too hard, but there's a couple bugs I want to show you guys because it killed me. <laughs> um, and I want to just make sure you guys are aware of it. Um, so you just kind of got to run through that. Not much you can do. So here's the mini boss. He's not too hard, even on vet. He's kind of just stationary. He has a couple mechanics, and one of them is really deceiving. So that's why I'm saying it. Um, like I'm sure they probably intend you to use the orb during the fight, but I don't. I don't never have. Uh, never needed to. Um, but he'll occasionally do this tremor. Yeah, this mechanic. So one thing to know: a, if you're right in the middle. You only get hit by one instance. It never double hits you. But one thing that's weird is if you're behind here, you still take damage as if it passes through. Even though it doesn't. So just be aware you can't use the orb to shield it. It still hits through even though the visual disappears. Let's see if I can get him to do it again so you guys can see like fully. Or if he wants to keep being a pain in the rear. That is also an option for him. Yeah, so here we go again. So as you'll see, yeah, see, like my health still ticks for some reason, even though I don't get any damage indicator. 
Um, I'm not sure if that's just the tremor hitting me or if it's actually this orb. I don't know. Uh, but, point is, nothing to worry about though. But now that we kill him, we get an awesome boon where now these orbs do damage. Which is very important as it's part of the safety mechanic for the fire final boss. As you'll see, when I get next to this orb with it, it starts sparking with fire now. While I have this buff. And it does an AoE damage too, which is nice. And as you see, it goes away, it stops. So we'll just heavy attack that and continue. Now we're just going to go pretty much straight for the final boss. There's an ad pull that is a little annoying on that, but it's cheesable. You yeah. know, nothing but grated cheese here. Alright, so we'll heavy attack the orb. We'll just keep on running. We're going to get, we're going to pick up this one here. We could probably be fine without, but it's always better safe than sorry. So, oop. And from there, we're just going to keep running forward. And we're essentially backtracking since we just completed the secret boss. And now we can just kill this orb here. And you do have to heavy attack them. I don't think light attacking triggers them. I think they did that intentionally. But you'll have this pull, which this pull can be pretty scary on that. But here's an easy way to beat it. So if you just aggro it and come back here, you kind of chill here. And if you'll notice, they're running behind us. And when they start throwing fireballs behind, just kind of jitter yourself back to the other portion of this pillar. You'll essentially just kind of rock back and forth to the point where you're line of sighting them. And that way they always are chasing you and they can't actually hit <laughs> you. So it's a, it's an easy way to kind of handle that pull and just kill the warden dude. And then they all despawn. So. And since he's melee instead of range, he's always just going to be there with you. So I don't see an orb there. I don't see an orb there. Did we get all of our... Oh, hello. Did we get all of our fragments? That's going to be interesting. Let's find out. I feel like we would have had a little bit more, but given our health, we might actually have had them all. Let's see. So we have not collected all the fortitude fragments, all remnants. Um, so just kind of keep an eye out for them. They might have been towards the spawn as they will spawn throughout the whole map. I've seen them occasionally spawn at the beginning of a map, so just gotta kind of keep your eye out. So this Pyre Lord's not too bad though. He'll occasionally do a fire breath attack. And he just sidestep it. He is he gets a little damage intensive later. He'll do this spin mechanic, and then you get two options. Either A, be ranged, and you just back out and just keep ranging him. Or if you're melee, kinda just chill out in here and walk with him and just wait to move until you have a full idea of where he's going. Now we're just gonna kite him over to the rock mechanic. And because it's going off now, we're going to heavy attack it as we're taking lots of damage. And from there, we can actually just walk up next to him. And now we're able to just kind of get some free damage off on him. If you're still learning this, I highly advise taking out this Flame Colossus. He actually doesn't have that much more. I think he's got double the health on that. Like roughly about double, but nothing they can't handle. So you just want to kill him. And because we're ranged, we're going to start getting some early damage in on that one. But they can be a tad obnoxious with how far they like to be. So he's doing his spin again, which he throws fireballs out when he does it. So you do need to heal if you're too far away. Hmm. Didn't mean to hit the boss. I wanted to hit the big dude. But, oh well. Alright, so he's doing his mechanic again. So he's going to heavy attack. And because we're taking it slow, just to show you guys mechanical stuff, we're just going to kill him. And he'll occasionally port to center. I don't know if he does it unless he's the final one. I think it's like kind of his bonus mechanic. But essentially, he'll port to center. And from there, he'll shoot out these little fireballs that like spin across the whole map. They're really slow, though. So just kind of just take your pace. You can't hurt him during that time. So just focus in on survival or killing the extra ads. And now time for the final boss. And from here, we'll enter the champion circle. And we get this lovely visual 
of a Void Lich, which is, to my knowledge, the first time in any Elder Scrolls game we've ever had a Void Lich. The Void is the, if I'm not mistaken, is the realm that Sithis is home to. So it's very cool. She's an awesome boss. I love it. One thing you could do if you have the Ring of Pillar like we do is you can aggro all these little Colossus dudes. And they'll all come center. And from here, essentially we'll just spam and kill them all early. They took the spawn throughout the fight, but we can kind of control them if we have enough damage. And just kill them all right off the bat. So that's that's typically how I like to do it if I have enough healing to. Or as well as enough AoE. Which Ring of Pale Order does help you do a lot. I'm kind of holding off here because I want to show you guys the Void Cage. Here it is. So we just got to break one of these walls. Or one of these portions. Um, but I'm actually going to see if I can wait a bit. Because I want to show you guys, you don't have to like fully wait for it to be like, like don't panic if it gets closer. Like as long as you can kill it, so like right now it's starting to detonate, so then we'll just kill one. As long as you kill it before it fully detonates, you'll be good. And from here, try to get her as low as you can. And now we're going to have our little explosion mechanic. We're going to choose the one that's the easiest in my opinion, which is this middle one. So we'll go to middle and enter the portal. In the portal we'll have this void fire horn. And from that essentially we just need to kill him as quickly as we can as if you look at the top the boss is increasing in health the longer we're in here. So we essentially want to just kind of take it out as quickly as we can and I'm kind of buying some time I know I have whole enough because it start, as you'll see it starts spawning these shade classes again. Um, you can actually aggro them in here if you want, <laughs> um, but once she starts, once she's finished, she'll get up, and then the Colossus dudes stay with you. One fun thing though is um, the next thing we're going. I'm actually gonna hold off on that. Um, I'll give you guys that advice later on. But we have another wall mechanic, so you just need to break through. And she does these AOEs occasionally. You just kind of kind of watch your feet. Um, but the ideal order I recommend doing the uh, grapples is going to be middle then the more danger kind of pipe area so you should call that left so left middle and then final will be right right summons a bunch of pyromancers and they are a royal pain in the rear the middle spawn makes this little minnow dude come out and here you can't hurt him but he spawns these aoe's that can slow you so just can't keep that in mind the boss also likes to teleport she just can't put herself underneath you and want to kill you Alright, but now we're just going to push her to the next phase. So she's going to do that mechanic again. We're going to grapple over and then hop into the void step. And then from here, we're just going to take out the chill mage. It'll just essentially start call lightning mechanics inside the center. So no additional adds, which I think is like the easiest way to handle it. Moving around is not too bad. So one super fun thing though, is now that we're here, to show you guys, if you guys are getting close to pushing her, push her instead. Because she'll actually start the explosion and everything except like including the skeletal goliath, like the bone goliaths, they all despawn except for these like void archers and such. In this phase we'll have the flame shapers and the uh, pyre lord, is that pyre lord? No, void drawer, my apologies. Um, he, he pretty much has the same mechanics as the Empire <laughs> Lord. And our main goal is we are just killing the Void Dramora. We do want to kill the Pyro, little Flame Shaper dude, if we can. But mainly just get that Void Lord down. And then from there we go back. Then you just use your Synergy button on these portals. And this is the final phase, so this is how you just end it. It's just, just how fast you do it, it's how long it'll take you to do it again. And that's it. Um, so we're going to run another one back. So I'll talk to you guys very shortly involved in that. Actually, you know what? I'll just talk to you guys the whole way we're doing that. So we're just going to swap characters now. You, know, you guys are going to get 
Full unfiltered experience. <laughs> Full unfiltered, unedited. Because the main thing we're just going to show from here is how to get the stamina boon and the stamina secret boss. Well, the green door secret boss. So we'll just let's hop on my little PTS stamplar I've been working with. Um, one thing I will say though, the arena has been a lot of fun. It's very different. And the picking your own kind of punishment kind of thing has been interesting. Um, so now we're going to pour on in. And from here we're going to be able to just quickly hop in. And I can show you guys how to get your green boon. The essence of endurance I believe. And then I can show you the <laughs> most annoying side boss. Um, so when we go on in here. Of course we're going to start up our quest again. Um, and now that we're on a stam tune, ideally what we're going to do is blue, then green, then, well, blue, then red, then green. Um, but because we're just going mainly for the green boon, we're going to do red right off the bat. It's just normal, so we're just showing this so you guys can know how to get these boons. So we're just going to go straight to red, then green. We don't have to worry about the rest, because we're not doing the rest. Um, but yep, yeah, now we're here, so we're just going to go ahead and go on in. Because we didn't do blue, you'll be able to see that we cannot get the health boon. Which is fine, but yeah. It's gone. The portal's gone. Yeah. So, it's nothing too bad though. Because it, we did, we're now doing this one first, it's easier than it was before. Um, each one you do scales the difficulty of the other. So, it's pretty nice on that front. Now we're at the Magma Queen, so we're just going to kill her as quickly as we can. speedrun point of view. <laughs> this stage roth is our target, so we don't have to really go too far anywhere. If anything, you can actually just kind of kite left and right to lie aside the little scamp boys. But, once we do that. Remember, if you always have a bow, you can always dodge roll to get extra speed. It's pretty nice. We are going to stop to kill these guys as we want the extra rock. Our jabs has crazy range, so you don't have to be that close. So we don't accidentally hit that dude. Because I'm bet he's a real big pain in the rear. Once again, we're just kind of line of sighting them. And then they all die out there. <laughs> the main reason why we do red is so that way we can get this little orb mechanic. It carries over to the green. Like, it's, it's an addition if you do it that way. We should not have to get too close to the Pyre Lord as he does do damage if we get close enough. But since we're just going for the kill, I'm just going to keep puncturing him. Jab, 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 jab. Alright. Alright, now we can go to green and now we have the orb mechanics so that way we can show you guys how to get the stamina boost. Always try to, if you can skip, go ahead, you know. 
for this anyway. Our main goal is just this troll, like the uh, troll gatekeeper. The troll gatekeeper does do an AOE smash a attack that you just want don't want to be in. So kill him beforehand or get out of the way. And to get the stamina boon, it's actually down there. So what we're gonna do is we gotta kill this little piggy boy. That's what we're gonna do first. So let's make sure we take out this little spriggan bud. And then you can bash him when he starts charging up that cone. And then you're done. And now we're gonna go get our stam boon. So you got the little orb down here. So just gonna sprint on down. And heavy attack. Boop. And now we just gotta run through these vast river of lava. There's gonna be another orb right over here. You can be down in the lava and hit it, so if you still have one active, just boop. And then just sprint all the way around. This one has a weird delay when you try picking it up, just so you're aware. At least it has for me in the past. Oh, it doesn't have the delay now. It did have a delay yesterday for me, and that could have been just the server lag as we were having like a little it was a little spiky yesterday, but it could have been my internet, I could be wrong on that. Oh look, I've actually never seen it spawn one here, so it can spawn another just right here on the pillar. So I'm gonna just pick up more stamina. And now we're at 37k and we were at 29 before, so we've already gained 8k stamina. It's crazy how many buffs you can get. And uh, I can jump, I swear. And so the other thing to check though is, especially with this one I've noticed it, and I've, I'm keen to believe all of them do it, it can spawn other ones back here. Like, I've had some just around the edges around here, so it's always good to just camp. Just take a quick little peek. I don't think it fully goes back to the full start, but it does go into this area. I've had one against that fence right there, for example. Um, but now we can just keep going forward. And now we have our stamina boon. And then we can get the the uh, stamina secret boss. Well, the uh, green secret boss. Oh, well, you guys can have seen all of them. So we're just going to get our boon. And since I've already explained this boss, I'm just going to go ahead and try killing it as quickly as possible. Okay. So with the stamina, well the green secret boss, I keep calling it stamina, I keep calling the portals based off like their stat. Now we have a grappling hook. We can actually grapple over here. And then we're going to run down this coast. And from here, this is where we're going to have the orb. Which, I mean, in theory, based off the jumping thing I showed you guys, you could totally just jump through here and potentially get to the secret boss but I don't know if it's gonna block the actual entrance or not that's the hard part this is giving us like two more fragments here it's always good to check these secret boss locations they tend to put more of the fragments here for all well, the uh, remnants here um, so let's see here now we're at this boss oh and there's one at the end this boss is annoying I'm not sure if there's a little trick to his maneuvering but so when we start fighting him here he'll just start hopping and when I say hopping I mean he just goes and he, like so there you go so he jumps further than you can grapple um, and then he'll just continue to be a pain in the rear um, so you just gotta be kinda quick to kinda catch up with him he'll do a little flame attack that leaves AOEs this guy can't go the opposite direction and yeah, we'll just keep running from you. So just be aware of that. He's been a lot more compliant than my first time with him. Like he just hopped to the complete opposite of the map like five times when I first fought him. But now that we've killed him, we have a new grappling cook. Um, and this one kind of makes it a little easier, which is nice. So what the empowered grapple does, just so you can see, um, oh, 
Yeah, so now it says the grappling hook now grants a temporary speed bonus. It says that, but there's a secret thing it does too. Oh, so we actually get the hunting speed boost, which is... doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you on its character sheet what it does. Alright, you can get pretty quick. Alright, let me just get our orbs and we run on back. Just a little extra speed while we do so. Alright. And so we're going to end up doing the final boss of this arena too. So you guys can see it with the new grappling hook. As there is some changes. Um, so it's not a whole lot. But it is something. It, it can help out. Especially for those that are like struggling to manage stamina especially. So we're also going to come grab this uh, little boon. Mainly because uh, the interrupting mechanic is the one that augments the most. Um, it actually doesn't tell you this, but it does interrupt them now that we have it. So, that's something to keep in mind. Alright. I'm going to do some speed grappling here. As I totally slow down. There's sometimes one behind this pillar, so we just can't keep your eye out for the remnants. Oh, hey, look, there's another remnant. So let's kind of grab on over and get back to the boss as I showed you before, but now we're a stamp too. Oh, that explains why the stats are a little bit lower. Hit me, bull. Oh, apparently you can't eat food when you get hit but when you're stunned. Alright, now we're at 42k stam. Um, because I forgot food buff ran out a little bit ago. Alright, so he's gonna of course run. Nothing changes here. We do have the uh, slight speed boost. I don't think it's a lot. I really don't. Well, that's something, apparently. Apparently, you can avoid the heavy attack by just grappling the post next to you. I know there's an achievement for doing, like, grappling away from it, but I didn't know it could even just be the post next to you. I think that counts. Um, so, here comes the benefit of having the stam boon now. Well, of having the stam mini boss killed. So if we grapple, it takes a moment, but it interrupts them for you. See? Interrupt, interrupt, interrupt. Don't have to do anything. So that's, it's super quick, it helps out a lot. Yeah, then we can just kind of DPS the boss. We'll kind of continue there. And every time the mages come up, you just kind of grapple between them, and you got it. So that's uh, all the secrets and tricks, and how to get all the boons, and just a general guide of the new arena. I really appreciate you guys hanging out through this entire video to learn these things. But as always, if you guys like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.